Pleasure, pleasure uh, to be here with you today. Would you please tell me a little bit about yourself? Well, I'm associate dean at the Fuqua Graduate School of Business at Duke University, and this is uh, a school that's just for MBA and PhD students. Mm -hmm. And so I uh, coordinate some of our international efforts, and I have uh, responsibility for all of Europe, Eastern Europe, uh, especially Russia, and CIS. I've been at the Fuqua School for about 17 years and have held a variety of positions including assistant dean for the daytime program and one at my original job was director of the career services and placement office. Excellent. And I understand you've been to Turkey recently. How are your initial thoughts about Turkey? Well, we, we had a great visit and we think it's a wonderful place to recruit uh, students, especially for our international MBA programs. We have a number of alumni from both the Duke University, some of them were in law and engineering, as well as from the Graduate School of Business. So we have a nice solid group of alumni that helped us there. Mr. Turkman has told me that um, you will be coming, actually visiting Azerbaijan soon. So what do you think about that? Well, we're, we're kind of a school that likes to be very entrepreneurial. We like to be on the cutting edge and being kind of the first school to visit new territories that we think are potential markets for our MBA programs and some of our other uh, programs that we uh, market on the worldwide stage. And so Azerbaijan, again, some of the Turkey uh, alumni from Turkey suggested that we should look at Azerbaijan because I had mentioned we had gone to Kazakhstan the year before and then we found that to be a really good market and they said well if you like Kazakhstan you're going to like Azerbaijan so this is our first effort and uh, Mr. Turkman has been very helpful in uh, helping us to meet people uh, as he did actually in Kazakhstan uh, as well as to uh, host an information session for potential students to our MBA program. Would you describe us what kind of MBA programs you have in your school? Well, we have four MBA programs, four different MBA programs, three of which we recruit for on the international stage, uh, and three of which we uh, were promoting and interviewing candidates for in Turkey. So we have the full-time daytime MBA, where students give up their job, come here for about two years, and take a degree in the United States. And then we have two kind of part-time executive MBA. One is called the Global Executive MBA, which is probably the most senior MBA degree in the world. It's designed for very senior level people who want to pick up an MBA degree. Average age is about 40 years old, and average work experience is about 15, 16 years. And that's a very flexible program that we design for very busy people where they can stay at their job pick up the MBA degree and have some kind of life uh, beyond mm -hmm. study. Mm -hmm. Because of the success of that program, we designed a second uh, part-time program called the Cross-Continent MBA. And that was designed for younger, fast-track uh, people who were starting to move into management. So this is for a group of people who are from three to kind of ten years of work experience. The global executive that I talked about first, you have to have 10 years of work experience or more to qualify. 
So the cross continent program is more for people with three to ten years of work experience. And so we create for all three of those, and it depends on what the candidate wants. If they want to get away uh, and come to the United States to study, then we have the daytime. Or if they want to stay at their job and work uh, and visit some very interesting places as part of the degree, then the cross-continent or global executive are good programs. Great. Looks like you're taking advantage of uh, internet. Very much so. In mm -hmm. fact, the design of the program is very unique. We call it place and space. Mm -hmm. And this was a model we developed and um, copyrighted back starting in 1995 when the internet was very young. Mm -hmm. And it was the only way we felt we could teach a program that would allow the flexibility for people to stay at their job. Well, an MBA has become more and more uh, popular in Turkey and applicants are very competitive as you know and they're actually looking for best MBA programs like Stanford and Harvard or Duke Fikra. So why Duke? What is, uh, actually separates Duke from other MBA programs in, uh, in the world? Sure. Well the schools you've named are all um, co competitor schools that we feel were very clearly in that caliber of school and Fuqua has been fortunate to be constantly ranked in the top 10 in the world by Financial Times and Business Week. So we feel we're one of the top programs. What makes us different? Probably partially its location. We're located in the southeast part of the United States, so a warmer climate. It's not a big city, so if people want a big city like New York or Boston, you know, they go to Columbia or maybe Harvard or maybe Chicago. For us, we are located in a very unique area called the Research Triangle Park. It is one of the largest centers in the United States for medical uh, research and development work, as well as for high-tech work. So IBM has most of its workforce now, the greatest majority, in the Research Triangle Park area. So it's a really unique area, so people who are interested, especially in healthcare, within the MBA, uh, come here and uh, for who want a slightly different lifestyle uh, as part of that. I think the third area that makes us unique is we're, we're affectionately called Team Fuqua. We do a lot of teamwork projects. We develop this model, especially for our full-time program, uh, at least 15 years ago. And so as we look at candidates, we look at people who will work well together, work on team projects, mm -hmm. and they become very close as a group, maybe not as competitive against each other, especially in the job search market, as maybe a few other schools. So I think those are a few of the things that make us unique. Yeah. Talking about group projects, that's probably good groundwork for uh, networking, isn't it? Yeah, very much so. Um, you know, part of the reason I think people come to both the full-time MBA as well as the executive or part-time programs is to develop a network, both to learn from very bright people from mm -hmm. different parts of the world and different industries, but also to make these friendships that last for a lifetime. And, you know, it's one of those things that makes any school uh, unique. And I think as people look at potential schools, I would strongly suggest that once they narrow their selection down to one or two schools, to actually go visit the school, or in our case, uh, maybe for full-time, come here to North Carolina or an executive MBA to come participate for one day in a residency and really understand what makes us different. And it may not be for them, but at least it gives them a chance to talk with other students who are in the program now and get a first-hand view. Excellent. Um, as you know, more and more uh, multinational firms have entered um, Turkey during the past year, and young professionals in Turkey are um, placing more emphasis on global issues. How is your school diverse, and what kind of emphasis do you put in diversity? Well, I think uh, it's a great question, and one area that we particularly feel that we're really strong at, and maybe also that makes us unique. So our dean has become very aggressive over the last few years about making sure that we get away from North Carolina. And so the design of our program uh, is completely based now 
on, we have developed now five major partnerships around the world, which allow our students to learn in those locations if they choose in the daytime program, or to actually travel there if they're part of the executive MBA. So we now have major partnerships in, uh, in some places, campuses in London, St. Petersburg, Russia, Delhi, India, uh, Dubai, and in Shanghai. So, and if you look at those locations, they weren't chosen at random, they were chosen for a purpose because we feel that's where business of tomorrow is going to happen. Mm -hmm. Those are the very fast growing economies and our students, regardless of which program, need to understand those locations and what makes business uh, go on in that, that particular part of the world. Excellent. <laughs> what is a typical day like for a student? Uh, in, in your school? Um, if they're in the full-time program, uh, they're probably taking a couple courses every day. They're probably working at the same time on projects that are assigned for those courses. Uh, if they're a first-year student, probably from the day they arrive, they're starting to work on their summer internship. So part of the design of the program, and this is true of most top U.S. business schools, there's a first year and a second year as part of the program. And it's separated by typically a three month period of the summer. And during that time, they go out and work in summer internships. And we work with them to find those paid summer internships. And typically they're done in an area that they want to pursue after they graduate. And so that's a big part of their uh, experience here is to look for summer internships if they're a first year student and if they're a second year for full-time jobs and that's probably the most important office for many of the MBAs while they're here because yeah. that's why they gave up their work to come here to get an MBA and hopefully get a better job. That's so true, yeah. Uh, how many students are in your program and uh, how many from different countries? So in the daytime program we bring in 440 students each year. So at any given time, between the first year class and the second, we'll have about 880 students in residence uh, at the school in North Carolina. In our executive programs, in Global Executive, we bring in about 70, 75 students each year. So smaller programs, especially because of the level. Uh, we want them to be closer as a group. The cross continent program the, for the younger MBA uh, has grown, and so now we bring in about 140, 150 students each year. So that's kind of the numbers for each. In each of those programs, one of our emphasis for admissions is to bring in interesting people from all over the world. And so that's one of the reasons why we went to Turkey, because we think it's a major business center. It's unique because it's very close between Europe and Asia and uh, Middle East, and it brings a fascinating culture. Uh, having been there, I can speak full firsthand. And so we want students to come here from Turkey to bring that experience and that knowledge to share with classmates. Uh, in any given year in the daytime program, about 40% of the students come from about 45 different countries. And in the part-time or executive MBAs, it's almost 50%. So we we place a strong emphasis on the diversity issue, mm -hmm. and we're very careful not to be oversaturated with one particular country because we have so many applicants from China and India that we literally could fill the school with high quality candidates just from those two countries. So we specifically say we'll only take so many students from uh, those two countries, so it allows us slots from other places to add to the interesting uh, aspects of diversity. Mm -hmm. That's a very interesting aspect. Um, so what are you looking um, for in an applicant? Well, we're looking for, I think, three major things. There are a lot of aspects to the admissions application, but the three things are, one, are they interesting? Mm -hmm. and, and that sounds like a, kind of a trite statement, but it's true. If, would they be, interesting to their classmates? Will they bring a different perspective, maybe from their culture, maybe from their work experience? So part of it is, what do they bring to the school? 
Second thing is clearly the ability to speak and write in English because every, all the courses are taught. And the third thing is math uh, because a lot of the courses are very quantitative in nature. So we look at GMAT scores, we look at their undergraduate transcripts from their high schools because we want to admit people who will not fail. Uh, it's not good for them, it's not yeah. good for us. So uh, can students compensate low grade point average or lower GMAT scores with work experience? That's a, it's an interesting question. I don't know if they can compensate by work experience. If a person has a low uh, GPA from their undergraduate mm -hmm. university, we would then say, okay, why is that? what happened during that period of time? Were there reasons that caused that? And maybe the GMAT will show us a different side. Maybe the GMAT is much stronger. Uh, or they have a low GMAT but very high undergraduate, so the same reason. Sometimes people don't do very well on standardized tests. And so we look then to say, do they have strong work ethic and good motivation that will compensate maybe for a low GMAT score? Work experience, we definitely want that work experience and that's a part of the admissions application, but if a candidate doesn't have good intelligence uh, to be able to compete at a pretty high level because they're going to be going um, you know, head to head with students who are very bright, uh, we just don't want to bring them here because they will be frustrated because they won't be able to keep up. Well, Dean Nagy, it's very excited to hear that you have very diverse student population. How about your faculty members? Are they uh, diverse as well? They are. Uh, we purposely, because we go out and look for top quality uh, PhDs, graduates, and experienced teachers from around the world, mm -hmm. we feel if our student population is diverse, then our faculty has to be as well. And they also bring that very interesting perspective from having grown up in different lands and cultures that we're trying to teach. Uh, besides normal business subjects, we also want to teach the culture and the history because we feel very strongly that you really can't understand business from a different part of the world unless someone knows that intimately. So if you go to the Middle East, you don't know business unless you know Islamic finance. And so, and no one knows Islamic finance better than a professor who might come from that region of the world who understands the con not only the concepts, but had put it into practice in their own life. So yes, we look very hard for uh, diversity. In fact, we're very fortunate to have uh, Turkish faculty members here. And so it's part of our culture uh, to bring in people who can add to that mix. Lovely. Well, thank you so much. We truly appreciate your time, and these are excellent insights about your school. Thank you. Very much. You're welcome.